So welcome everyone, hello. I'm glad to have you here for the Green and Healthy Schools Wisconsin Classroom Learning Series. Our presentation this week is Recycling Right in Wisconsin with Green and Healthy Schools partner, Hilltopper Recycling and Refuse Services. I'd like to thank our series sponsor, Skyward, and show this very short video from them. Since our humble beginnings as a small family business, Skyward has evolved into a global technology leader serving more than 2,000 school districts. At Skyward, we are proud to support the initiatives of the Green and Healthy Schools Classroom Learning Series. Excellent, so let's get started. Presenting today is Brandon Knudsen. For the past three years, Brandon has held the role of Refuse and Recycling Manager at Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling Services, which is located in Onalaska, Wisconsin. Brandon is a graduate of Holman High School and received his bachelor's degree in recreation management from UW La Crosse in 2017. In his free time, Brandon enjoys the outdoors, watching sports, exercising, and playing with his dog, Marty. Okay, Brandon, so recycling has been around for quite some time. What can you tell us about how the industry is in Wisconsin and what should we know about recycling at home and school? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody. Oh, thank you, Leslie. So awesome. So let me get started a little bit here. Um, so again, thank you. Good morning to everybody. Uh, which I appreciate you guys all joining me um, and learning about recycling. So I know it's kind of a basic um, category and it's kind of we're all kind of familiar with just recycling in general. Um, but there's more to it than that. So it's pretty complex. Um, so I kind of want to dig a little bit deeper into it and share the kind of just the whole overall picture of kind of what um, recycling is like in the state of Wisconsin in general. Um, so moving on. So again, so Leslie kind of just mentioned a little bit who I am. Um, so I am a graduate of Holman High School, so which is uh, on the uh, west part of the state, so near uh, the Mississippi. Um, so I went to UW La Crosse and I got my bachelor's degree in recreation management. Um, and in 2017, I joined Hilltopper. Uh, so Hilltopper is a family owned and ran hauler of hauler and collector of refuse, which is garbage and recycling. Um, so we operate our own MRF, which is material recovery facility. So just in, in simple, that's a recycling center. Um, so we process, we collect, and we sort through recycling at our own facility. Um, so again, yeah, Hilltopper's been around since 1984 and it's been family owned ever since. Um, so moving on from there. So again, so from the topics today, we are going to kind of talk a little bit more in regards, we are, we're all familiar with the three R's to the concept, but we'll kind of just touch on that basically pretty quick. Um, so the history of recycling, kind of where we started and where we're at now, um, the collection processes. So there's more than just collecting recycling. Um, and so there's the overall processing of it, the sorting and, and everything. So we'll kind of touch on that. Um, what is actual recyclable? So that's going to where we we'll spend the most time. Um, so again, every everything is a little bit different compared to. I said if you're in, you know, Stevens Point, Milwaukee, Green Bay, uh, Madison, La Crosse, uh, all the recycling is the collection process is can be different. So that's kind of where I want to touch on a little bit more. Um, some specialty recycling. Uh, what's the end product of the, the recycling that you guys put into your bins? Where does it go? What happens to it? And then just the keys to recycling correctly. Um, so that's going to be kind of what we're going to talk about this morning um, as a whole. Okay, so moving on to so the three R's. So again, this is pretty basic. We've all probably heard this um, in our lifetime as of as of today. Um, so it's becoming more popular to talk about the three R's, um, whether in school, um, whether you're with your parents, um, it's been pretty, pretty talked about and relayed, I hope at this time, here in this lifetime. Um, so three R's, so the first one obviously is going to reduce. So when we re reduce something, we're just trying not to use, use something as much. So it's like when you go to the grocery store, we're not going to try to purchase X amount of things um, because we know that it's either going to be garbage. Uh, so we're just going to try to eliminate the amount of material waste that we generate. The next R is going to be reuse. So that is going to be the action um, or practice of using something again. So obviously, you know, we've got say a water bottle, you know, most of the times that if you have 
you know, at a sporting event or something like that, your parents give you a water bottle and you might just go fill it up in, in the water fountain rather than going to have to buy a brand new water bottle again, um, which, is, which is great. So you're reusing a product so you don't have to purchase another one um, and which would then produce more excess waste or even just, just recycling in general. But so then obviously the end R, the last R is going to be recycle. So if we can't reduce something, we can't reuse something, we're going to recycle it. So that's going to be the process of converting waste materials into new materials and objects. So when I think of, so again, when I showed you guys this plastic bottle, um, that is going to be, so when we recycle something, this is going to be more of the end product. So it's, again, you see like the little beads and stuff. So this is going to be, this was this, or this was this at one point. So, so that's gonna be the process of recycling. So we're going to be able to use this product and we're going to make either a new water bottle out of it um, or it goes into a different um, factory or other product that's going to be made um, out of plastic. So that's pretty cool. So then obviously we're going to be talking more on my expertise, my professional um, experience is going to be the recycling side. Um, so that's what we're going to discuss most um, this morning. So moving on, it's so a history of recycling. So obviously, so back in the 1800s, you know, there wasn't too, too much organized recycling programs. So we kind of think as, as far back as, you know, maybe the Indians, Native Americans, um, they, they reused or repurposed a lot of the, you know, the, the game that they hunted or the, um, you know, the rocks and other objects that they might find around um, their areas of home. Um, so they're going to obviously repurpose those. Uh, and so that's where the three R's kind of coming into play in regards to the 1800s. Um, so obviously the Salvation Army um, was founded in London as well. So when you think of the Salvation Army, we get a lot of reuse of clothing, um, other items. And so then the last bullet point here is the New York City or just New York City implemented a material recovery facility. So again, that's a recycling center. Um, so when you think of MRF, when I say MRF, it's just gonna be material facility, material recovery facility, which is just a recycling center. So then now moving on to the 18 or the 1900s, um, America's first aluminum can recycling facility was opened in Chicago and Cleveland. Uh, recycling and rationing were uh, important factors from World War I and World War II. Um, so again, I think, again, I wasn't around during that time, but I, I know that from learning in history and stuff that the metals and stuff that were collected um, were trying to ration back for the use of, or for the war. Um, Earth Day was founded in the 1900s. Um, first recycling mill was built in Pennsylvania. So that's going to be whether, um, you know, the reuse, I would imagine it's probably gonna be for paper. So they were able to obviously collect recycled paper and then make it into um, more paper. And this in the 1900s was the first curbside recycling program that was implemented in the United States. So that was founded in uh, Missouri University City. So kind of coming closer to now's time, um, the Environmental Protection Agency um, kind of must, you know, they've done a lot with the issue of global warming. Uh, and so just the reduction of trash in general, cutting down trash and linking more recycling uh, helps with the reduction of global warming. So it cuts down uh, greenhouse gases. Um, recycling electronics becomes a law, so e-waste. Plastic bags are banned in the state of California. So that is going to be, you know, we're hearing about that more often now um, than ever. That's so not just California that's doing that, there's other states, I think New York might be doing it as well. Um, but if you think just in regards to uh, if any of your families or you guys shop at Aldi, um, that they don't give out plastic bags or just bags in general, that you really you have to purchase them um, or bring your own reusable bags. So that's kind of where we're, we're leaning towards. And then National Sword, um, China, China's imports, they had banned um, the imports of recycling material, recycling materials. That's what we, that's more complex. Um, but so China just said, we're not going to take any more material coming into our country, whether it be plastics, fiber, um, and other material because of their, it was just becoming too much, too much of a material to handle than they could actually handle. 
So they said, so that might be another topic uh, along the way that we might be able to touch on in future uh, presentations is the national sword. But so yes, yeah, so that's kind of the timeline of recycling. Um, so for recycling processing streams, um, this is again, this, there's more to it than just collecting material and saying, okay, um, yeah, we're just going to collect it in and then we just send it out to somebody else to, to recycle it. So as is in today, you're probably going to be more familiar with the single stream process. So this is when a lot of your, at your own homes, your schools and so forth, you can just put everything into one bit. So that's going to be your fibers, your glass, your aluminum, your plastics, uh, and so forth. And they all go into the one bin. So like I said, that's like when you're at your house, you've got your cart that you put out next to the road, everything goes in the one bin. Um, so with this system, it's going to be for the convenience. So people, you know, municipalities and stuff invest in this program because it's easy. It's easy for you guys to just put it in all in one bin. Um, but that gets to the point of it, gets, it almost gets too easy where it's just like, okay, it's, this must be recycled so I can just throw it in my bin. Um, whereas that's not, shouldn't be the case. Um, so with the single stream process, you're gonna get more contamination um, because of the convenience, it makes it easy, um, but you're also able to process a lot more material because of the mechanical uh, machinery and, and everything that, that comes with it. Um, so yeah, so we just gotta keep in mind that it's, it might be easy, seem easy, um, but doesn't mean it's, it's the right way to do it. Um, so moving on to so the next system is the dual stream process. So this is a stream that, or dual stream process that Hilltopper has at our facility. So it's a little, seen as a little bit more outdated. So we don't have as much machinery as a single stream process does. Um, but when it comes to the contamination and the cleanliness of the recyclables that is being collected, it is seen to be the most effective. So at the dual stream process, we don't mix our fibers with the containers. As you can see in the picture that you have your mixed containers, which includes your um, aluminum cans, you know, your plastics, um, your glass, and, and so forth. And then on the right-hand side, you have your paper boxes, um, your magazines, newspapers. Um, so the fiber stays separate from your containers. So from in our facility, we keep we try to keep all the fibers separate from those, those items and then the, the containers just get sorted out. Um, whereas the paper just goes into the, the one bay and it gets bailed, so it really doesn't even get touched. So it just comes down to, but it's much more slower with the dual stream process, um, but in the end, it comes out much cleaner, which the vendors that buy our material like. Um, so yeah, I don't know if there's any questions with anything so far. Um, if not, we'll just keep on moving forward. All right. So now we're going to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of the presentation. Um, so each one of you guys should have received a, or seen this as like a residential, um, cheat sheet for recycling. Um, so this is going to, hopefully you guys can put it on your fridge at home or, um, keep at school and, and utilize this to the fullest extent because uh, this will come in handy. Um, I spent quite a bit of time on that. And hopefully it's you guys can utilize it to, to an extent. Um, so this, so digging into it right away, so you guys can reference that sheet uh, while I kind of break this down a little bit. But um, so the items first off is the items that can be recycled in Wisconsin. So it tends to be, you know, throughout the whole state, we don't have any issues. Um, most recycling programs are going to have this material in their recycling program. Um, so you can see down at the bottom of the presentation, I just have just the items that are palisized may not be accepted in your local recycling program. So then just reference the handout possibly, or um, reach out to your local recycling collective or municipality and they should be able to help you. Um, so these first ones, so the glass, obviously we've got no problem with, with the collection of glass, um, but just leaving that there is gonna be a problem because glass has become, there's so much of it uh, that the movement of, of glass has become an issue. Um, so even in the single stream processes, again, we don't at Hilltopper don't have a single stream process, but facilities that do 
have issues moving their glass because it's so dirty. It's all the paper, all the fine stuff get into their mixed glass and none of the glass recyclers want it. Um, so the dual stream process, we have very clean glass compared to a single stream facility. We've got no issues moving our glass. Whereas some of the single stream operations have to um, landfill their glass as far as like their daily cover. So after the day is done at the landfill, they might bring in this glass just to put over top of it, just to keep the material down. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so when I go to my drink, my drinking beverages and whatnot, I don't use, I usually go for the aluminum rather than the glass because uh, it's easier to recycle aluminum than glass. Um, next item is going to be your aluminum. So again, your foils, um, your cans, um, and yeah, so that's pretty basic. Again, these are, um, are gonna be accepted throughout your guys' recycling programs. Um, now we have your tin. So again, this is gonna be your pots, pans, cans, uh, and empty aerosols. So as you can see, we have the italicized empty aerosols. Um, in our facility, we can take the, the aerosols where some come. So some companies, some uh, programs might not want them because of the safety hazards. Um, but most, most programs will be okay with, with uh, the aerosols as long as they're empty. Um, if they're still full, it's gonna be technically still become a hazardous material. So we have to keep that in mind no matter what kind of aerosol it is. So the next category is items that still can be recycled in Wisconsin. Um, so we're moving on to like the plastics and the containers and, and so forth. Make sure. I'm... Okay. So the items, so these items include, so number one, plastics. So that comes down to, you know, your water bottles, your soda bottles. Um, and then there might be some other miscellaneous liquids that come in number one, plastics. But the important thing to keep in mind here is bottle form. So you can see that it's italicized. Um, when I think of a number one plastic, again, we'll reach into it a little bit when it comes to not the material not collected. Um, we try to keep in mind the, the bottles for number one, anything with like a, a top on it uh, is smaller than the rest of the body. So you can think of the bottle form. Um, so that's just kind of, there are number one plastics out there. Again, we'll touch on it in, in a few minutes here as far as like the clamshells. That's a number one plastic, but those will get discarded as trash in our in our uh, recycling programs. Most recycling programs throughout the state are going to have that same same issue. Um, they can get a better value for their number one plastics if they keep those clamshells and miscellaneous non bottle form plastics out of their bales. So next item is number two: natural plastics. Uh, so that's going to be your milk jugs, your dairy dairy items. Actually, I think that this one that I remember showing you guys earlier, this is going to be a dairy material. So this is milk jugs, um, all broke down into pellets. Um, so this will technically probably be made back into um, more milk jugs. Um, so that one's pretty self-explanatory too. Um, so then again, we have number two, plastic colored plastics. So that's going to be your detergents, uh, your cleaning supplies, um, coffee containers. So it's going to be that colorful, um, thicker plastics. Um, so again, each one of these numbers, you guys will talk about this at the end of the presentation, but has the numbering system. Um, so you can see that both natural and colors have the same number, um, but they get separated out differently. So it really doesn't matter to you guys as far as the collection process, but um, for us as a recycler and a seller of the material, we have to keep those two separate for, um, for the vendors. And now we have the number four is number five plastics. Um, so again, this is all italicized. Um, number, so number ones and twos are your common plastics that will go into your recycling stream. So the, the totals are three, four, five, six, and sevens um, that uh, vary. Um, but so recently, I think as of last year, three through seven plastics were exempt from um, the landfill. So we can take those to the landfill now. So there used to be a law on saying keeping those that material out of the landfill, but now because there's it's an issue moving that that product, um, the the state of Wisconsin said okay for recyclers that that have this material coming in that we can landfill it now. So you can see it's all italicized for number fours and fives. Um, at Hilltopper, we do not accept 
uh, forcify plastics. We don't have a market for it. Um, if we did, we don't collect enough of it. Um, so then we don't have enough room to store material. Um, we can't just leave things laying around all over the place um, at our facility. Um, so as of right now, we don't collect um, any three through seven plastics. Um, I know that some people throughout the state might. Um, so that really depends on your recycling program. So that where it comes down to play as far as reaching out to your local recycler, um, your local municipality, um, they should be able to, to help you. But down the, down the line in the future, hopefully we can um, start accepting the fours and fives in our recycling programs in La Crosse. Um, but as of right now, it's just the ones and twos in bottle form. So keep that in mind, so bottle form. And then, so the, moving on to the other items that can be recycled in Wisconsin. So we have cartons. So again, these are italicized as well. Um, at Hilltopper, we collect cartons, so milk cartons, um, juice cartons, um, so anything, ice cream containers, paper cups um, are also on that list for material that can be recycled at our facility. I know throughout the rest of the state, there might be some varying of, of those items. So again, that's check with your local uh, municipality, um, your local recycler and see exactly what they think if they take that material. Um, whereas in La Crosse, we do. Um, but I know as far as like Stevens Point, Wausau area, I know they don't. Um, but again, throughout Milwaukee and Madison and Green Bay, I would just check with your, your local municipality. And then as far as fibers, so that's pretty self-explanatory too, as well as you know, magazines, office paper, um, cereal boxes, cardboard boxes, um, and that, that item. So anything really paper um, can, can go into the recycling streams throughout the state of Wisconsin. All right, just to make sure. Questions, anybody have any issues? No, okay. All right, so now this is where, again, it's, it's gonna vary throughout the rest of the state, um, but this is gonna be pretty common um, for us in, in Wisconsin. So items not to be recycled, um, it, again, this, this varies, but these are the one, as a collector of recycling, this is where we have the most issues with at our facility. Um, you know, we get a lot of big bulky, bulky plastics that come in as far as like the five gallon buckets and things like that. But we even get reuse out of those. If we get those coming through our facility, we will have somebody pick those out and we reuse them for um, collecting light bulbs, batteries and, and all those miscellaneous things. Um, so again, as far as a recycler, we're doing the reuse uh, of some material that comes through our facility as well. We're not just discarding it in this garbage. Um, so again, this should be on the sheet that you guys have that should have been handed out before the presentation. Um, so this just highlights, again, so we'll start out with the number one plastic clamshell and the containers. So you can see on the left right there that, so that when you think of a clamshell, you think of like the cookies or donuts that come, you know, from Quick Trip or your, your local grocery store. Um, so we get a lot of those containers that come through our facility, but we do not accept them into our recycling program do because of uh, the end product that the companies just don't, don't want it. The plastic is not, um, it is technically a number one plastic, but they tell us that they can't make um, their products, the chemistry of their products aren't the same with that material mixed in. So that's why we say in plastic and bottle form for your number ones. Um, so not just all generic feed, all number one. So just kind of think of, of just really bottle forms when it comes to your number one plastics. Your clamshells and containers that are listed as a number one, just discard as, as garbage. Um, but again, you know, check with your local uh, recycler or municipality on these. Uh, this is just kind of a rule of thumb for our area and across. Um, but again, it's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty much the same throughout the state. And so then we're just moving on down. So you obviously have your plastic bags. Uh, we don't accept that into the recycling program as far as curbside. So again, this is technically pretty much more curbside. Um, so the bags, you know, if you guys were, um, if you guys have festival foods or any of the grow Walmarts and stuff around you guys, uh, that they might have next to the um, front doors or something like that, they may have got a bag or a box that says that recycle your clean plastic bags here. Um, so they might, you know, send it back to their manufacturer or, or something and get some, some use out of them but we don't 
you you won't ever see. I mean, I don't say ever, but as far as a number of curbside recycling program, you won't. That's very rare to have those included um, because they jam up a lot of the machinery and stuff. They wrap around the belts and 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 so forth, and it's just it's they're a mess. So that's when I say when I get down to um, the reuse reuse a, a, a bag. You know, even if you have these, you can reuse them at the grocery store. Um, but I said I don't even use the plastic bags anymore when I go to the grocery store or when I go to Walmart. I'll bring my own reusable bags. Um, so just cut those out. Those are just a lot of issues with everything as far as the environment um, and recycling in general. Styrofoam. Um, that it, I, I think we're kind of all on the same page with that, but we still find that recycling stream every once in a while. Styrofoam, no, throw it away. Um, so your styrofoam cups, your to-go containers from restaurants and stuff, just, just throw it away. Um, so here's a number two plastic clamshells. Again, you'll come across these as far as um, like the uh, ice cream pails. Um, those will be just discarded as, as trash at our facility. Uh, it's just not the recycling, the vendors, the purchasers of the material from us just don't, they don't want that material in their, um, in the product, the end product. Um, so that's the same thing as your number one clamshells. So that's the same thing for number twos. Um, so then obviously your plastic utensils and straws, that's all garbage. I know we kind of got that. Um, phase as far as save the turtles with the straws. Um, so using your reusable straws and, and, and whatnot, even a lot of the restaurants won't even give you a straw anymore unless you ask for one. Uh, it's just those unnecessary plastic items is it, it, well, I think we're going in the right direction with those, just kind of cutting them out. Um, but so the plastic utensils, straws, throw them away if you have them. Uh, bubble wrap. So again, that's just another plastic bubble wrap. Um, throw it away. And then the number three, number six, and number seven. So you could, that possibly might include your fours and fives, um, but those are will be discarded as trash. Uh, so there's just becoming too much of an issue with um, just a different chemistry. So that's why it's all numbered differently because the plastics are made of of different chemistries. There's different uh, material in those that hold to hold the uh, material together. Um, so as you can see, the number seven right there it says other. So again, there's just so many different categories of plastics now that they just, if it doesn't fit the one through six, they just categorize it as seven and all right, moving on. Um, so who, who really knows what that, what some plastics are even made out of. Um, so yeah, so I guess just the overall uh, concept of this, this slide is if it's, if it's plastic, it doesn't mean it's recyclable. Um, I guess if we want to keep it um, broad, that there's more to it than if it's, oh, I've got a plastic plastic container, it's it's, it's got to be recycled, or a plastic toy or something like that. And we get a lot of stuff coming through our facilities that's is a lot of people just say, well, it's, well, it's plastic, it's got to be recyclable, right? No, that's not the case. So pay attention um, to, especially this even the sheet that I gave you, it's, it, it helps us as recyclers um, when we get the citizens to recycle properly, um, it will benefit um, our local communities in the long run, um, just like cutting down just the overall trash. So, so then kind of real quick, specialty recycle items that we um, accept at our facility, again, this might vary, um, but just universal waste. So it's gonna be your batteries, light bulbs, um, so light ballast and, and items like that. So again, this, this, this might vary throughout, but so the e-waste, that's your electronic waste, your computer items, um, you know, DVD players, uh, and that's pretty self-explanatory as well. And large items. Um, so at Hilltopper, we started, uh, we have a partner um, company that recycles mattresses. So we're the only, so that company is called Seven Rivers Recycling. Um, so the owners of Hilltopper own Seven Rivers Recycling as well. Uh, so we are the only uh, mattress, mattress, mattress and box spring recycler in the state of Wisconsin. Um, so we get mattresses coming in from all over Minnesota. We got Iowa, um, I think throughout Illinois, um, Wisconsin. Um, and so that's becoming more uh, interesting as far as because that's really never been done before. Um, so just mattresses are staying out of, 
Um, the landfills, uh, which is they are very harmful to um, just landfills because they tend to possibly start fires. Um, they take up a lot of space. So that's just something that um, they keep in mind if, if your guys' local municipalities, um, local villages and, and so counties um, aren't collecting mattresses, that's something to possibly bring up to, to your um, leaders, which is, which is uh, something to keep in mind. And then obviously your refrigerators, washers, dryers, appliances um, can all be recyclable because it's metal. And Brandon, we have a question here. Oh, sure. Yep. So how clean do containers need to be before they're put into recycling bins? So like um, I have my peanut butter container, do I have to really scrub that out before I put it in there? No, not technically. I mean, it really depends on the system. Um, again, with a single stream system and a dual stream system that when you're thinking of single stream, you have more of like the lasers there's more mechanical machinery stuff that goes into it. So if it's if that laser shoots shoots at that one uh, peanut butter jar and it's not cleaned out, it might discard it as as garbage. Um, where our facility, that an un unclean peanut butter jar will go into the recycling stream. Um, so again, it really varies, but usually we tell people to clean them out. Um, do your best. You know, you don't have to spend an hour and a half cleaning out a peanut butter jar because we all know what, what that could be like. Um, but, you know, even with my peanut butter jars, I'll give it to my dog, you know, and let him lick it out and, and see and it's clean as is possible from there. Um, but see, so yeah, I mean, really, as far as like jars with jelly and it, just rinse it out, you know, marinara sauce, rinse it out. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, um, but clean ish. I'll kind of just leave it at that point. Okay. And then what about lids? Should lids be thrown away? Should they be replaced back on the container? Should they go in loose? Yep. It really doesn't matter as far as like caps to, so again, bottles that can stay on. That's not a problem. Um, but if you want to discard it, go for it. As far as um, like when I think of, again, like beer caps and stuff like that, that those those might get mixed in with a, in a single stream process. Those are going to get mixed in, even with a dual stream process, if they're loose, um, they're going to get mixed in with the glass. Um, so then that's going to become an issue. That's not going to get recycled as metal. Um, but so then we kind of, if you have a, a tin can and fill it up with um, bottle caps, you know, again, if it's you know, like the bigger caps and stuff, the metal ones, um, fill them up in that tin can and squeeze the, the can together. And that's going to get recycled in the end. Um, same with like jelly, jelly lids and stuff. If it's metal, usually those will get picked up in the in the metal recycling. But um, in caps and stuff for you know, on the peanut butters, those can all stay on. That's not, that's not a problem. Um, it's really the, the metal metal lids is kind of where it, I would probably just take them off, put them in there loose. Was that good on that end? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so again, if there's any questions, just let me know. Uh, so then, okay. So this is just some pictures from our facility uh, of just the end product. You know, what, what happens when you guys go starts, you guys finish a can of soda or a um, bottle of soda and you put it in your bin and ship it off to recycling center. Um, so this is what happens when we're done with it. When it's, we, we've created a bale, usually one of these bales, um, is going to weigh, it really depends on the commodity though that you're um, bailing, um, but usually they come close to a ton, so which is 2,000 pounds. Um, so then we will ship these to, um, so obviously the tin is up on your left-hand side, top left, so that's all tin cans. So that's gonna be um, sent to a local you know, metal uh, factory, whatever, to be just melted down, probably made back into really anything tin. Um, so then you have your glass in the middle, then you've got your plastics um, on the top right and the bottom left. Um, so you can see the all dairy milk jugs in the one, uh, one bale in the left, bottom left right there. And then we have the cardboard. Um, so that's all shipped off to specific vendors that will buy it from, from us for a X amount of um, dollars per ton or per, per pound. Um, and then it just gets made into um, usually new product probably, um, but it really, really varies throughout the, 
um, it's from the different vendors itself. So it's you know, when you come across new vendors and stuff, we, we discuss and see exactly what they're doing. But okay, so I think this is the last, this is my last slide. Yep, okay, so then, so to wrap everything up, um, so just the proper household, you know, even schools, since we're kind of focusing more on the schools here, um, the recycling tips, um, what can you guys do uh, to improve recycling in our state? Um, and then even say so it's gonna go throughout the United States and even the world, but everything kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, but these are just some kind of do's and don'ts on our end as far as the recycler. Do not bag your recycling. Um, I don't know, it's, we try to preach this as much as possible, um, but with the plastic bags, remember kind of going back to the plastic bag thing, it, it really puts the damper on our um, equipment when things are bagged and our, just our efficiency as far as when things are bagged because things have to bags have to be ripped open. Um, they, they get caught in, in our equipment. They're just, there's just more of a hassle than anything. I know it might be convenient for the, the person, you know, you as a resident, but um, it's an absolute disaster really when it comes down to getting to the recycling facility. So put your material in the bins loose. Um, you know, I, I just have a bin at my home. It's not bagged. I mean, it might be a little dirty, yes, at the bottom and whatnot, but I put all my um, soda cans, um, plastic bottles, tin cans, glass bottles, um, everything goes in there loose and then each week I just empty it in my cart um, loose. And so that, that plays a huge factor um, into the, just the overall efficiency of a recycling center. Um, understand what is and is not recyclable. So again, what kind of we just went over, um, ask questions if you're not sure. Uh, don't just, if it's okay, again, if it's plastic, it's gotta be recyclable, right? No, that's not the case. Um, so be familiar ask questions, check with your city, your town, village, municipality, or your, your recycling collector, which would be in our, our area would be us. Um, so yeah, we're always willing to, to answer questions. Um, most of the time it's gonna going be found on the recycling um, collector's website. You know, we've got a website, it's all on there. Um, the village, your local municipality should have that on their website as well. Um, so then this is just something that we preach to people when in doubt, throw it out. Um, this, again, if there's garbage, there's a lot of garbage that comes into our facility because people are just aren't sure where it goes. If it, is it recycling? Oh, it might be. So I'm just going to throw my bin. It's just, it's gone, it's done from there. It's, I don't have to worry about it. That's not the case. Um, so again, kind of just giving you an example. Each day at our facility, we process close to um, a ton of, of garbage a day. That comes through, we have to discard over close to 2,000 pounds of garbage a day that people think is recycling. Um, and we're a small facility compared to some of the bigger operations. So just keep that in mind that there's a lot of garbage that still comes through our, comes through the recycling stream. Um, be familiar with the, the plastic numbering system. So again, we kind of touched on that earlier. So you get that's off to the right side right there. You've got your one through seven plastics. Um, but just because it's number one plastic doesn't mean it's recyclable. It's just because it's number two plastic doesn't mean it's recyclable. Make sure we're kind of paying attention to the whole bottle form um, area. And as far as if it's in a container form or a clamshell form, it's most likely gonna be garbage. Um, so again, ask questions, um, reach out to your uh, local, local representative or something. And then here we're gonna touch on that, rinse jars, bottles of excess food and liquid. Um, you know, we just talked about that. So again, it doesn't have to be totally clean, um, but clean-ish. Uh, it's it just comes down to you know people kind of really have to touch this material if it's covered in sticky stuff. People kind of have to touch that in the long in the long run. So just be if you don't want to touch it, somebody else doesn't want to touch it. And lastly, uh, keep e-waste so universal waste, batteries, light bulbs, hazardous waste out of your general recycling stream. So this is like your curbside programs. Um, there are special drop-offs at your local counties, your cities and stuff for this material. Um, even at our facility at the collector itself, recycling collector, we've got a specific program for just our e-waste batteries, light bulbs. So we handle this differently um, and it's sh shipped off totally separate 
uh, compared to our general recycling um, commodities. Um, a lot of information there. So I guess I'll just take questions now. If anybody has anything, don't be afraid. I'm definitely willing to answer anything you guys got. All right, thank you so much, Brandon. That was an excellent overview of um, what can be recycled in Wisconsin or in at least some areas. We do have some questions for you. Sure. Um, so one question that came in is, how much does one ton of the recycled products normally sell for? Um, again, that really varies. Um, kind of jumping back to the, the national sword item that we talked about. Um, the, so the China not taking in any more material in their country at all. Uh, I think closely to, I think it was about half of the recyclers in, so the end product was being shipped to China. Um, so after that, the value of recycling went down. So in 2000, 2019 until now, the value of recycling's really, really decreased. Um, but again, for cardboard and stuff right about now, you might be looking at, you know, $75 a ton. So, I mean, it's nothing crazy, but that could reach up to $200 a ton if the markets are good. Um, but so at the again, right now, they're pretty low plastics. It really depends on your um, number ones versus your number twos. So for number two milk jugs and stuff, we can get, you know, close to, it might vary from $400 a ton to $800 a ton. Um, so it just goes to show us that those markets play a huge factor into the value. Um, aluminum is kind of the same way. The markets are always fluctuating for aluminum. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, if you ask me tomorrow, it might be something different. So that's what, uh, I'll kind of just keep it simple. And then we have another question about the mattress recycling. So what do you do with the mattresses? Um, when they are recycled, what are they used for? Um, so when we do mattress recycling, so the, we've got our own facility and stuff for just the mattresses um, and box springs. Uh, so we separate out the springs, obviously it gets broken down. Um, so the metal comes out, you, we recycle all the wood that gets chipped and it gets sent to one of the local um, facilities for biofuel. Um, and then, so the foam gets all separated out. Um, we also do like the, I don't think I've got, we've got mattress felt stuff that we use for like repurposing. Um, so we got a lot of different companies that use it for like moving blankets. Um, they, we had a company yesterday, we set aside uh, a dozen of the mattress felts for um, gardening. Uh, putting underneath the, uh, your flowers and mulch and stuff for um, bedding. Um, so that the local gardener has been using that for, for a while now. Um, but so yeah, so just every single item that comes out of that mattress uh, will be recycled in the end, uh, which has been pretty cool. As long as the markets are good. That's the only way to get to keep in mind is that the markets need to be, um, need to be right for us to be able to move it and make a make a profit because I said we're a business. So we need to make, make money off of, of sending the material away. We can't just do it just because we won't be able to operate if we weren't able to make some money out of it. Okay, so Brandon, here's another question for you. Sure. How do you find markets for recycled products and how can we continue to expand the markets for products so more items can be recycled? Um, so again, it really just comes down to, can somebody take this material in and and make a business out of it. You know, can they um, think of something new? Can they upcycle it into, like I said, another material? Um, I came across a commercial yesterday from Ikea that Ikea is making their lot of shelving and stuff out of plastic bottles now. Um, cool, I get it again, it really just comes down to, is the science able to, to be able to hold something? Is the plastics able to hold up if you were to use it in a specific mold? I am not sure. Um, but as far as at Hilltopper, when we come across markets, usually it comes down to, again, that's outside my realm. We've got a logistics person that does um, the digging of, you know, what the markets are like um, and where we can ship things off to. Um, and again, it really comes down to the bottom dollar. Um, if we, there, there might be a recycler in California, but if we're only collecting a, a truckload, we got to send that all the way to California. And in the end, we're probably going to lose money. So it's like, okay, where, where do we 
stop and begin. Um, Companies too will reach out to to us too if there's a new market like around the middle might reach out to us directly and kind of inform us what they're doing. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just more of a collaborative effort than anything. All right, excellent. I think we'll go ahead and stop there. Thank you, Brandon, so much for your time today and for sharing your presentation with us. We really appreciate it. I hope. Everyone participating got some good hints that they can take back to home or school um, and kind of invigorate your recycling program. And don't forget about those first two R's either, reduce and reuse. So thank you again. Thank you to all the participants. Have a great day.